a, a rare moment of candor from uh, your glorious leader. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yes. Welcome, comrades, to the art of cinema. I am your Minister of Propaganda, Colonel T. I am, as ever, humbly prostrate before the radiant, revolutionary grace that emanates from our glorious leader, General Secretary F. Yes, it's true, Colonel. Listen to me, my workers and soldiers, and give heed to me, my People's Republic of F. For an ideology will go out from me, and my atrocity shall be a light to the peoples. I will bring near my revolution swiftly. My re-education has gone out, and my arms will rule the People's Republic of F. The coastlands wait for me, and in my mighty PRF Navy they hope. Lift up your eyes to your glorious leader, and look at the earth beneath, for the capitalists will vanish like smoke. The imperialists shall be cast down like a garment, and the counter-revolutionaries will die like gnats. But my utopia will be forever, and my revolution shall never be ended. So be it, sir. Today on The Art of Cinema, we decipher, we unravel, we make intelligible the film at number nine on our list of the top ten films of the 2000s. It's a Russian movie called Ostrov, which means the island. Very well, Colonel. Let's find out how Ostrov, the island, teaches our workers and soldiers to sacrifice themselves in the name of my revolution. In Russia, during the Second World War, Anatoly and Tikhon are working on a Soviet boat carrying coal. Their boat is boarded by the Nazis, sir, and the Nazis prepare to execute Anatoly and Tikhon. But Anatoly is a coward, and he begs the Nazis not to shoot him. So the Nazis offer Anatoly a deal. If he shoots Tikhon, the Nazis won't shoot him. Terrified, Anatoly shoots and kills Tikhon, whose body falls into the water. You know, in Russia, body of water falls into you. But the Nazis are devious, Colonel. They're not like you or me. I expect they're not done with this Anatoly character. No, sir. The Nazis, who are devious, have hidden a bomb on a timer on Anatoly's boat. After they leave, it explodes. But Anatoly survives, and the next morning he's rescued on the shore by Orthodox Christian monks. Anatoly becomes a monk at their monastery, stoking coal to keep them warm in the northern climate. There are two kinds of people, Colonel. There are those who are enlightened, who submit to my ideology, and there are Nazis. Don't be fooled, workers and soldiers of the People's Republic of F. There are Nazis all around us, and we must eliminate them all with extreme prejudice. Thirty years pass. Anatoly is racked with guilt over having killed Tikhon all those years ago, and this has fostered an extreme humility within him. He's truly penitent, then, like nobody else, and as a result, Anatoly has acquired spiritual gifts. He can read people's thoughts. He can see into their futures. God finds his prayers acceptable and will heal people's illnesses and afflictions at his request. So many people visit the monastery to consult him about major decisions in their lives or ask him to pray for their healing. It's tough love from Anatoly. He tells them hard truths, and his behavior is bizarre. But these visitors receive wisdom and healing through Anatoly's prayers. So Anatoly is a prophet like unto myself. Just as Anatoly can prophesy for these visitors, I have foreseen the decline and collapse of capitalism. You see, Colonel, corporate bureaucracy shall remove production from the hands of entrepreneurs. Cronyism will lead wealthy corporations to convince their governments to protect their interests over and against those of the people. Lastly, capitalism shall produce a class of comfortable, entitled, well-educated citizens who are so far removed from understanding the source of their own affluence that they'll turn on it and undo the system from within in their own ignorance. And that's where our Ministry of Propaganda comes in, sir. That's right, Colonel. You yourself have been sowing the seeds of the downfall of capitalism by installing our propaganda at American universities. Let me tell you something. There are some ideas, mine for example, that are so idiotic, you have to have a PhD to be capable of believing them. It takes 10 years of constant brainwashing before you'll actually take any of them seriously. The other monks, however, find Anatoly frustrating. They only see that he's socializing with outsiders while they labor and keep their rule of prayer. They don't see that he helps these people. And Anatoly plays pranks on the other monks. He annoys them. He misbehaves in worship. He scolds them and talks what seems like nonsense to them. And then he lectures them on their sins. He seems to be a lunatic. Oh, sure. I wouldn't have any patience for this guy. Here in the PRF, we've got places we can vanish guys like Anatoly, if you get my drift. 
At the end of the film, an admiral in the Soviet Navy brings his young daughter to see Anatoly. She has psychological problems that are in fact the result of demonic possession. She's impish and hysterical. So Anatoly takes her to the small barren island where he often goes to pray. He prays for her until God casts the demon out of her. It's a real labor. When Anatoly brings the young woman back to the monastery, he asks the admiral to come with him for confession. The admiral doesn't understand what he needs to confess. But once they're inside, we understand that the admiral is in fact Tikhon, the man Anatoly had shot thirty years before. He was only hit in the arm, and he survived after he fell off the boat into the water. So Anatoly did not ask him to come and offer confession to him. Anatoly confesses to Tikhon and asks his forgiveness. After a life of penitence for that horrible crime, at the end of Anatoly's life, God shows him that Tikhon is alive, that he is forgiven. Anatoly then prophecies to the other monks that he'll die in three days. He's been working to stoke coal at the monastery and seems to have black lung disease. It's coal like on the boat where he shot Tikhon. He spent his life amidst this coal, next to the furnaces he shovels it into. The coal is symbolic, you see, sir. The coal symbolizes the hell he's lived in as a humble, penitent monk. Well, Colonel, as the Ozark Mountain Daredevils have taught us, if you want to get to heaven, you have to raise a little hell. Or go through hell, I guess, in Anatoly's case. So during the last three days of his life, as he tells the other monks he's about to die, even though they don't take him seriously, they help him build his coffin. Anatoly puts on a white garment. A garment? So he doesn't put on clothes, he puts on a garment? Yes, sir, that's what you call clothes when you're spiritual. I see. Garment. Okay, sure. Go ahead. So dressed in a baptismal garment, Anatoly lays down in his coffin and dies. In the end, the other monks have learned from Anatoly. He makes peace with all of them, and they realize that he's been a blessing to them in spite of their frustration with him. Or indeed, because of their frustration, Colonel. Ostrov, or The Island, is a film that depicts genuine spirituality without being preachy about it. In other films depicting Christian saints, they're often insufferably prude. They're set up on an ivory tower, so to speak, for all the other characters to be amazed by. Goody two-shoes. An ostentatiously virtuous person, yes sir. But not Anatoly in The Island. His spiritual strength is not something he or the other monks are even really aware of. It's something paradoxical. It seems strange to everyone. They say that God works in mysterious ways, and the film is a good example of that. Ah, yes, paradox. Many people can't see how two ideas that contradict each other rationally might not contradict each other actually. The opposite of a true statement is a false statement, but the opposite of a profound truth might well be another profound truth. Worthless workmanship, unsustained eagerness, longingly satisfied. Or think about this statement. This sentence is false. But if the sentence is false, then it's not false, which means it's true. But the sentence is false. That's paradox. You see? But I'll tell you what's not false. No force can check the sweeping advance of the service personnel and people who march in fine array, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, following the leadership of the respected comrade General Secretary F, a great man of thought and deed. Workers and soldiers of the People's Republic of F, Ostrov, the island, is number nine on our list of the ten best movies of the 2000s. This has been the art of cinema with our glorious leader, General Secretary F. Let us maintain vigilance against the ever-looming threat of an American invasion. You are required to report any non-participation or dissent amongst your comrades. Don't forget to tune in to The Art of Cinema again next time to discover which film ranks at number eight on our list in your next Mandatory Reeducation Session. <laughs>